Many people throughout the reign of Henry VIII would go to their executions for refusing to support the king's wishes and laws. Henry VIII even executed Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, two of his own wives, and also his closest friend Thomas Cromwell. To go against the wishes of the king was very dangerous, and around 70,000 people would be executed inside of his country. Around 3% of the population were executed during the notorious Tudor king's time on the throne. But one of the biggest changes he brought to religion was to state that he was the supreme head of the Church of England. Motivated by the need to divorce his first wife Catherine of Aragon, Henry VIII greatly wanted to marry and sleep with Anne Boleyn, who captivated him. But she refused to take to the king's bed until he had sorted out his first marriage. But to do this he had to break from Rome and the Pope. One man who incurred the brutal wrath of Henry VIII was John Rochester, who today is considered a martyr, but his execution was incredibly sadistic and shocking. Join us today as we look at the horrific execution of the monk that defied Henry VIII, and to support our channel, as always, please make sure to subscribe. John Rochester was born around 1498, and he lived a life devoted to religion. He was a strong and staunch Catholic, and he lived inside of the London Charter House. He was a brother of Sir Robert Rochester, the Comptroller of the Household, and a man who became a Privy Councillor during the reign of Bloody Mary I. Inside of London's Charter House, he lived a very pious and quiet life, and devoted his time to tranquillity and religious study. He would pray a number of times each day, and lived with many of the monks inside the Charter House. Henry VIII and his government in particular were anxious about securing the support from the monks there, regarding the acceptance of Henry VIII's supremacy over the Church. They lived a rather prestigious life and were well thought of all over England and Europe, and they were a prominent part of Catholic worship. Henry VIII's government could not turn the majority of the Carthusian monks there, as they believed the only person who had the supremacy over the church was a Pope in Rome. So Henry VIII sought to then destroy any resistance that he faced from the monks. On the 4th of May 1535, he sent three leading Carthusian monks to their executions at the Tyburn Tree. These men were incredibly religious and pious men, and they were brutally hanged, drawn and quartered, for just not supporting Henry VIII's change. The following month, three more monks from the London Charter House were executed at Tyburn, and the Carthusian Monastery was destroyed, and its numbers were decimated, with more being locked up in Newgate Prison, and some were starved and died there. Inside of the monastery, John Rochester was a choir monk, and he also opposed the Acts of Supremacy, and the King's Supremacy of the Church. Four more monks from the London house were arrested, two were taken to the Carthusian house in Nottinghamshire, while John Rochester and James Walworth were taken to the Charter House in Hull. Around this time, the government had successfully managed to put down an uprising in Lincolnshire, but on the 13th of October 1536, a serious threat arose against Henry VIII and Thomas Cromwell. The Pilgrimage of Grace broke out, and the rebels led by Robert Ask rose up against the dissolutions of the monasteries, and also the changes the king had made to the church. This was popular, and the king faced his most serious threat. Thousands of rebels got together and managed to occupy and seize control of the city of York. But the government now believed they had strongly dealt with the resistance, and any dissent as they were worried as this would spread and serve as a more serious threat to the king's authority and leadership. York itself and Yorkshire became a centre of unrest, and John Rochester found himself inside of the county. But to teach the people of York a lesson, John Rochester was used as a scapegoat by Henry VIII's government to put the people of York off rebelling and joining the uprisings. As he had been taken to York, he was then brought to the city, where he was presented in front of the Lord President of the North, Thomas Howard, the Duke of Norfolk. He was accused of treason charges, linked to rebellions, which was in fact false, and it's believed his trial was held to send a message to the people of the city not to rise up, and to keep them down and scare them. Howard quickly condemned John Rochester and another man to death, and he organised a terrifying death sentence for them. It was stated that the pair should be hanged from the city's battlements in chains, until their remains rotted and they then fell into pieces. This execution took place on the 11th of May 1537, and John Rochester was then hanged, and his body was hung in chains on what it's believed today is Clifford's Tower in York. Thousands of people would pass under John Rochester's decaying corpse each day and would be reminded to fall into line. This is a similar fate as to what happened to Robert Ask, 
the leader of the Pilgrimage of Grace, who from Clifford's Tower was also hanged in chains. Rochester's remains were later then picked up by the birds that hung around the city. Ultimately, John Rochester, the monk from the London Charter House, was killed by the fact he could not support Henry VIII in his wishes to be known as the supreme head of the Church of England. There were many others, such as Sir Thomas More and John Fisher, who would go to their executions for the lack of support, and many across England were furious that the king would force them to change their religious beliefs and ideas that were so important to them. Henry VIII's changes to religion caused thousands of people to be killed or to leave the country in their homes, as they feared persecution. The pilgrimage of grace rose up in defiance of those monks and nuns who were forced out of their homes, and were forced to leave their livelihoods and ways of life behind. It was this which resulted in the death of John Rochester, and the king's government wanted a scapegoat to punish, to ensure that people fought twice about rebelling against the Tudor king. Ultimately, the sorry sight of John Rochester, the peaceful monk's remains and body, hanging from the rotting top of the battlement, Ultimately, the sorry sight of John Rochester, the peaceful monk's remains, and his body hanging rotting from the top of a battlement in York, would have been a very strong sight, and one which would have made people distance themselves from resisting. It was the reign of terror that Henry VIII wanted, and John Rochester was one of his bloody victims. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.